Hello creative adventurers, welcome to week two of the It's Christmas Time Quilt Along. Today we'll be working on block one, which will become row one when you make all five of the same block. This week's block is the presents block. You'll make five of them. The block is very simple. It's primarily rectangles and squares and a couple of simple half square triangles. I know you'll enjoy making them. Um, before we get started, please, if you like this video, please subscribe and give it a big thumbs up and tell a friend. Also, if you'll head on over to my website, there you'll find the free PDF of the Quilt Along schedule and overview, and then also the free pattern for this week's block. You'll want to make sure you download everything you need for the entire Quilt Along by November 30th. After November 30th, the pattern will be consolidated and it will go on sale uh, on my website. So it's free through November 30th, 2021. Let's get started. For this block, you'll need seven 10 inch squares, five for the presents, one for the ribbons, and one for the bows. And then you'll need your background fabric. For my background fabric, I'm using Kona Bone, but you could use whatever background fabric works best for you. In addition, you'll need your alphabet labels if you're using them, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G for this block. You, of course, could choose any fabrics that you like. In fact, you could use fabric from your stash. If you do that, you may want to choose just a little bit of six different fabrics, one for each row, or you could mix and match whatever works best for you. For this quilt along, I chose Sweetwater's Red Barn Christmas. You can see here the fabrics. It's a layer cake, a stack of 10 inch squares. Before we get started cutting out our fabrics, I want to call your attention to page three of each of the patterns. I've put on page three a quick and easy label section for you. You can download it and print it out and use it to label your fabrics. It's fabrics A through G and units one, two, three, and four. Of course, if you print them on cardstock, you could certainly reuse them. First, I have a couple of tips to help you get started. One of the things that I did was I downloaded off of the internet a sheet that shows the different fabrics for my layer cake that I chose, which is Red Barn Christmas. I'm such a planner and a lister that I went through and I made codes for each of the rows that I'm going to use. So for example, I chose um, P for presents and I chose this one and this one and this one and this one and so on for my fabrics for my presents row. Then for the next week, which is houses, I put H's for houses for the different layer cake squares I'm going to use for my house fabrics. That's just me. You could certainly do it random. That's no problem at all. <clears throat> this is easy to download and um, code it for yourself if you want to be as organized and um, list maker as I am. The next thing I suggest is that you might want to make a test block. Here, as I was designing the quilt, I made a test block from some old flannel fabric scraps that I had laying around. That way I could make sure that the block was the correct dimensions and I had the correct instructions. I will actually make my test blocks into a table runner, just so you know. That's something you might want to consider doing. Okay, next. Here are my layer cake squares for the body of the present. Let me move the bow part and the background out of the way. I have six, or excuse me, I have five layer cake squares. I've lined them all up just like this, and I'm going to cut all of them at the same time. But before you do that, if you choose to do all of yours at the same time, I recommend first that you change the needle on your machine if you don't remember the last time you changed it, and then also change the blade on your rotary cutter. This is really important when you're cutting fabric because that way you won't have strain on your wrists. You'll be able to cut easily and safely without jerking or tearing the material or making as many cutting mistakes. So be sure to change your blade on your rotary cutter if you haven't done it recently. The first thing we're going to do is cut the rectangles of the print, print number one, for our present body. That's the main sections of the present. I'm going to go ahead and cut the layer cake squares down into the rectangles I need. Please refer to your block pattern for the actual dimensions. And then we will mark these with the fabric letter A. I will need two rectangles from each layer cake square. Another thing you need to do is to check the dimensions of your layer cake squares, your 10 inch squares. In my case, let me move the camera a little bit if I can. 
so that you can see this, you can see that the 10 inch squares go beyond the dimensions of 10 inches on the mat. This means that the manufacturer has chosen the valleys of the paint edges to measure their 10 inches. So keep that in mind when you're cutting. It can be as much as a quarter inch um, difference in the size of your layer cake squares. In my case, it's about an eighth of an inch or so. I'm not going to trim the edges. I'm just going to keep that in mind and measure from valley to valley when I'm cutting. One thing you can do is to take a weight and put it on your ruler to help stabilize the ruler so it doesn't shift when you're cutting. That helps make sure your cuts are accurate. And one more. Now I need to cut them to the other dimension. I'm going to do that now. This other I'm going to save for uh, other parts of other blocks. I'm counting over to make sure I have my dimensions correct. and cut. These are our fabric A squares. I'll label them and then set them aside. Next we're going to cut our ribbon section that goes in the middle between the two parts of the present. And I will need five of these cuts. Next, I'm going to subcut them into the smaller rectangles. Please refer to your pattern for the exact dimensions for this cut. I will cut five rectangles. Okay, this part is scrap for other parts of other blocks. And here are my five rectangles that go in the middle which act as the ribbon of the present. This will be our fabric B. I'll label it B and set it aside. Next we're going to cut the bow body. That will be out of print two. That will also be this same fabric. I'm going to cut uh, 10 squares for the bow body. First I'm going to cut one dimension and then the other. Here I'm using the width of my two and a half inch ruler to help make things quick and easy. Then I'm going to subcut this down into the squares that I need and do the same with additional fabric. This is what you'll have left after you finish cutting your print fabrics. Save these scraps for other rows and blocks. So now we have our print fabrics cut for our presence block. We have fabric A for the present bodies, fabric B is the ribbons that go on the body of the present, and then fabric C is the bow part of the half square triangles will need the print part. And I have two coordinating fabrics which I used because one layer cake square would not be enough for cutting all of the uh, print for the bow body and the ribbon. So you'll need to choose um, a two and a half inch strip off of one of your other layer cake squares to finish out the parts you need for the HSTs for the bow. And here are mine. Next, it's time to move on to cutting all of our background pieces. You're likely using yardage for your background. Be sure to press it well before you begin making any cuts. That will ensure your cuts are accurate. The first thing I'm going to do is trim off my selvages. So I line up my ruler, with the edge of the selvage and then give it a quick trim. That leaves me with a clean cut so I have an accurate place to start at. Next I'm going to start with my largest, tallest measurement and cut from there. These are fabric G rectangles. And I'll need 10 of those. This is fabric is doubled so I just have to cut five of them. Six, eight, 
and 10. I'm going to trim the very edge and make a clean cut and then I'll measure the dimension that I need for the final cut. This is our fabric G rectangles and we'll set those aside. Now I'm measuring my six and a half inch rectangles which is fabric C. I've got a six and a half inch ruler here that I'm going to use but you can certainly just line it up on your mat and cut that way. Then I will subcut these into the appropriate sizes after that. Now I'm cutting some of my fabric F I mean rectangles. Here I'm cutting a few more fabric F rectangles. I'm using a ruler to help me with one of the dimensions. It makes it fast, accurate, and easy. Here I'm moving on to cutting my fabric E squares. Again, I can stack them, cut a clean edge, and uh, cut more than one set at a time. Carefully lining up my ruler on the mat, cutting a clean edge. Then use my ruler again to sub subcut into the squares that I need. I've stacked this four layers, so I'm cutting four at a time. I need a total of 10. There's eight, and then I'll take off two and cut the remaining two. Set the other aside, I can use later for another piece. Okay, now I'm stacking my fabric E squares as well and labeling them with our fabric E label. Okay, so now we've cut our background strips. So here's our fabric C, fabric E, fabric F, and fabric G background pieces. The first thing we're going to do is to sew the fabric A and fabric B pieces together to create the present body. I'll do this by lining up a fabric A and with the fabric B piece, right sides together, matching them up, and then we're gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam all the way down. And then we're going to add it to the other side, like this. Right sides together, lining up the fabrics and stitching with a quarter inch seam. You could use diagonal seam tape if that works for you. A tape ledge would work, a quarter inch foot, whatever is best for you and your situation. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is press the seams open and we're going to trim the unit and then we will attach the present background sides after that. You can see from this close-up of the present section, I have pressed the seams open to reduce the bulk. Check the pattern for the exact dimensions and trim this section to size. Now that we've trimmed and pressed our AB unit, the present section, we're going to add the sides of the present on using our fabric C rectangles. So what I'll do is I'll take one fabric C rectangle and I'm going to put it right sides together with the edge of the present and stitch a quarter inch seam all the way down and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, next I'm going to, again, press the seams open and trim the unit one more time and that will be the present body unit. As you can see, we're moving on to the bow unit. I've got my fabric D squares and my fabric E squares. The first thing I want to do when we're constructing, constructing our HSTs or half square triangles is to draw a line, a diagonal line, on the back of the E fabric E squares. There's a couple ways to do that. You could line it up on the mat like this and use your ruler to draw the line carefully. You can do that. 
or you could do it the other direction, lining it up, turning the fabric square itself, placing the ruler, and then drawing the line. You want to make sure the line itself, the pencil line itself, is on the line, not the ruler. So you have to allow for the width of the pencil point. Once you do that, then you're going to put right sides together, like right sides together, there we go, like that. And then you're going to stitch right on the drawn line on both of them. So here's one ready to go, and then here is the other one. You don't have to draw a line if you have something like diagonal seam tape or a seam so easy guide uh, from Lori Holt uh, instead of drawing the line, but whatever works best for you and your situation. Okay, let's sew these HSTs and press them. Okay, we're going to sew the HSTs together. You might want to pin, but you don't have to. One tip I have is to sew just to the right side of the line, one needle's width to the right side of the drawn line, so that when you open it up and iron it, that seam will actually be accurate. Trust me, I learned the hard way to leave just a tiny bit of gap. My HSTs kept coming out wrong and I finally figured it out. And I'm going to chain piece by putting the next one under the presser foot without lifting up. Just slightly to the left of the needle. Okay, we're ready to trim and then press. Here you can see that we've sewn the HST and we've sewn just slightly to the left of the drawn line. I'm going to remove the pin and then trim the half square triangle with a quarter inch seam. It doesn't have to be exact, I'm just going to eyeball it. As long as you have sufficient room, it'll be fine. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is press it gently, rolling it very gently and just pressing on it with my, with my fingers. And then I'm going to go take it to the iron and iron it gently. This is a bias seam, so we want to be careful and not distort it by pressing too hard in any one direction. Let's take it to the ironing board. So here are our two HSTs. I'm going to press them. I've gently press them open. Now I'm going to take my iron and gently press as well. Not swishing or pulling, just gently pressing. After we do that, then we will trim them up to the dimensions in the pattern. Gently press and we will trim. Okay, now we're going to sew the two HSCs together to make the bow. You want to make sure that your background fabrics are touching so this part here, the print, becomes the bow. So I'm going to sew them right sides together, matching up with a quarter inch seam, and stitch. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Okay, you can see we've uh, sewed the two HSTs together to make the bow. Now we're going to press it. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to finger press it slightly. Then I'm going to press the seam open. That will help to reduce the bulk in this section right here. Press the other side. There, it's ready to trim. Okay, now I'm trimming the bow to size. Check the pattern for the exact dimensions, but it's pretty straightforward. And let's do this. Now I've trimmed one side of the bow and I'm trimming the other side. After that, we'll trim the top and the bottom of the bow. Now that we have the bow, the next thing is to add the background pieces to each side of the bow. Now we're going to sew a fabric F to each side of the bow. Right sides together, line them up, stitch with a quarter inch seam on both sides.
You can see that I've added the background fabric to one side of the bow and now I'm adding the other side to the bow. Next we're going to press and then trim. Here is the bow unit. Let me flip it over. You can see that I've pressed these outside seams open to reduce the bulk at these intersections right here. The last thing I want to do with the bow unit before attaching the background pieces on the top and the bottom of the block are to trim the bow unit to size. So check your pattern for the exact dimensions of the unit. Okay, the block is getting closer to being finished. What we have left now is the bow unit and the present unit. All we need to do now is take our fabric G strips. We're going to sew one right sides together with a quarter inch seam to the top of the bow unit and another to the bottom of the present unit. Once those are sewed on, then we'll sew the two halves of the block together and our present block will be done. Now I'm sewing one fabric G unit to the top of the bow unit. Now I'm attaching a fabric G rectangle to the bottom of the present unit and stitching. Last but not least, I'm stitching the top half, the bow unit, to the bottom half, the present unit, to complete the block. Working from top to bottom, let me explain how I press the block. The top seam, where fabric G joins the top of the bow unit, I press the seam toward the background fabric. That will reduce bulk in the top seam. The middle seam, where the bow unit and the present unit are joined, I press that seam open to reduce bulk along the entire seam and all the intersections. The bottom seam, where fabric G joins the present unit, I press toward the present unit to reduce bulk and strengthen the seam in case you want to stitch in the ditch around the present itself. I will wait to square the block to 9.5 inches square until I complete all six of the present blocks. Then I'll square each of them to 9.5 inches. Here you can see all five of my present blocks up on my design wall. They look really cute. Thank you for watching today. Please stay tuned next week for week number three, Block to the Houses block. For the 2021, it's Christmas time quilt along. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, tell a friend, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Head on over to my blog at decondesigns.com. There you can pick up the pattern for this week's block and the ones for the rest of the quilt along. I'll see you soon. Take care.